After spending a few months molting, uh, she was hard penned, so it was time to start her training. The first stage to this is reclaiming. I've not handled her while she was molting, and she had been fed as much food as she wanted, so she was quite fed up. But this is where her imprint behaviours came into use. With a large piece of food on the glove, um, I stepped into the aviary and she jumped straight to the glove and began to eat, allowing me to fit some furniture. While this went nice and smoothly, the next step was likely to upset her, so I wanted to get it done as fast as possible. Her beak had become a little overgrown, and so to prevent it from breaking in any way, and to make it easier for her to eat, I needed to cope it. Coping is a process in which we remove some of the outer layer of the beak, similar to how we must um, periodically cut our fingernails. Once some length had been removed and it had been reshaped, I gave her feet a quick clean, allowing me to check the undersides of her toes that you don't get to see very often. I then put her on a perch to relax for a bit before attempting the next step of training, feeding on the fist. Before her molt, she was flying around 850 grams, but at this stage, she was weighing over 950 grams. So while she didn't want to eat the food, she still stepped nicely to the glove from the perch. And that was a win in my eyes. Things got a little interesting. Because I was flying her to the lure before she started to molt, I thought she may remember, and so I tried putting her on a perch in the field and showing the lure. She had no interest in this and started randomly flying around at the length of the creance. <laughs> it was obvious to me at this point that in order to train her, I would have to go right back to basics. So the next day, I put her on a perch and I dropped the lure right under her feet. She bound to it straight away and whilst there was a lot of mantling, she ate the food and then stepped back to the glove.
The next day, I attached her to the crayons and put her back on the flying perching field and I dropped the lure just a couple of meters away from her. And to my surprise, she flew down and bound to it with quite a, quite a uh, nice quick reaction, really. The next day I followed the same routine, only doubling the distance between her and the lure. Slightly slower reaction, but still relatively good for this early stage of training. On day six, I wanted to increase the distance further, and rather than just dropping the lure, I wanted to swing it and have her catch it in the air. Like the second day, she had other plans, taking off before I was ready, and then sort of reaching the end of a creance line and just sort of randomly flying around. I picked her up and brought her back to the perch, but now a bit of a breeze had started, so she wanted to face the opposite way to where the camera was set up. I managed to get a little distance and start swinging the lure and this time she came straight for it and so I threw the lure up to meet her feet but a combination of her having a few months off and me rushing to try and keep her attention meant that she didn't quite bind to it and so she met it on the floor instead. We attempted the same again the next day and this time it all went to plan. We went through this for another two days increasing the distance each time. I was then confident that I could take her off the crayons for the first time uh, for a free flight. At this stage I didn't expect her to just start flying around like she did before her molt. I wanted to go through the exact same routine as before just to make sure that once she was loose she would still keep all of her focus on that lure. She took off and now that she was free of the burden of a crane dragging through the grass she had gained so much height by the time that she got to me that I had to throw the entire lure as high as I could just to meet her feet. So then on day 10, it was time for a real test. I was now confident that while free, her focus was still on the lure, but rather than just throwing the lure straight for her feet, I wanted to keep swinging it, having her fly past, hoping she would come back around. And boy did she impress me. The speed and the height she achieved was far beyond what I was expecting from her at this stage of training. And I even managed to get a few passes with the lure.
was only a short flight while she builds up fitness. I don't want to push her too hard and risk her getting tired and then landing somewhere before I call her in for the lure. So once her wing beats had slowed a little, I called her straight in. The next day she did just as well. Again, I managed to get a few passes and I kept it short, but it's really nice to see her just finding her wings and having fun. Now, although we're at the end of this video, we are not at the end of Harriet's journey. This was just the first 12 days of her training. So going forward, she has a lot of work to do to gain fitness and height. So if you don't want to miss out on future videos showing her progress, then make sure to hit that subscribe button. If you have enjoyed this video, then make sure to leave a like and a comment. There are lots more videos on the way, so stay tuned. And as always, thank you for watching.